Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's master class. And the topic today is 21 features in MATLAB you need now. Um, thanks for joining me today. My name is Lauren. I've been at MathWorks for over 30 years. And I try to share my knowledge, such as today's class, um, with people around the world. You might also find some useful uh, MATLAB tips and tricks on the blog I host at mathworks.com called The Art of MATLAB. Now, um, I have two goals today. And the first is to introduce you to some features um, that maybe you don't know about. Um, I'm guessing that most of you will know some of them, but very few of you will know all of them that I show. And I also want you to take away um, how to find out about more new features that may be helpful for whatever you're working on. And so those are my goals today to focus on showing you some new stuff. This is going to kind of be a little, um, um, I don't know what the right word is exactly, but a little bit uh, uh, fast and loose. I'm not doing one big demo because I want to show off different features in different ways. And in fact, when I talk to my colleagues at MathWorks or my boss or someone, uh, if I just give them the code that I write, I find that I need to then talk to them about what it's doing and what the plot means and all that sort of stuff. And um, so it actually takes a bunch of extra. Um, but that's not true anymore. I can actually hand them something such that, as you see in the um, screen right now, um, uh, an artifact in MATLAB. This is called a live script. And this live script looks like a document. This is my title, Where are the Earthquakes? Um, and then some text. And you can see I have a hyperlink here. And I put in a picture explaining the Richter scale. And I even have some mathematics here. And if I wanted to, if I found a, a mistake or if I wanted to put more, I could put in any kind of mathematical symbols I want um, because communicating includes communicating the mathematics of what we're doing. But it is still MATLAB code, OK? And that may be a little bit surprising. So um, let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to load in some of the data. Now, I can run. Um, Basically, the way I used to from a regular MATLAB script, you'll see instead a, a part of the tool strip called the live editor. And this is where you'll find ways to do formatting of the text that's in there, switching between text over here and code over here. And then I can do things like we've always done, run a section or run a section in advance, put a section break in and so on. So I'm going to run a section right now. And um, what you see is that this actually put the output right into my, um, my same document here. Um, so I don't have to go looking around now uh, in another window that's popped up or something like that. Now, in fact, I have some choices about this. So I can actually put the code um, uh, on the left and the output on the right here. I'm just making it bigger so you can see. Um, I'm going to actually put it back to being in line for right now. Uh, so that you can see what's going on. And now um, you'll see on this plot, I can do a bunch of things like I can choose zoom in. And suppose I want to zoom in on the Atlantic Ocean. There we go. And you'll notice that MATLAB offers to update the code. So if I wish to see only that portion of the, uh, or show off that portion of the Earth um, going forward, that I can, I, I get the best of interactively exploring and getting the code created for me and being able to document what I did. Well, um, now this is a little bit cheesy what I've done here. I'm plotting latitude versus longitude. And that's not the way the Earth really works. This sort of assumes that we peeled the Earth off of a globe and made it flat. And um, we didn't account for the fact that the, the polar regions really aren't the same like physical distance from um, minus 20 to 80, even if it's not quite at the pole near the top, um, the distance at the equator for that amount of, of degrees is going to be a lot bigger than if we're near the polar regions. So it turns out that I can um, uh, instead um, look at the quakes in a different way. OK, and now what you'll see is I have a geographic map with a particular sort of um, uh, 
map projection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize the tool strip for the moment so that um, you can see that what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to plot these quakes as bubbles where the bubble size is going to be proportional to the magnitude. And I'm starting with a minimum magnitude of three. Now, if I want to show this to someone um, and they want to try it for themselves, as long as they have MATLAB and I give them all this code, they can go and change it. And I can use um, this indication that this is not uh, up to date anymore. And I can click there and it will recalculate that, um, that section for me. And now we can see that there's a bunch more plot, uh, um, a fewer uh, bubbles there representing all the, um, all of the different earthquakes that happened in that month. And so I want to tell you a little bit about um, how I'm going to show you what we've done. I've got this little um, window here where I'm going to click off things. So I just showed you a little bit about the live editor. I showed you about formatted text and images, embedded interactive outputs. Um, and the default plot act interactivity, so I could um, zoom in right there. And I showed you geographic um, plots. Um, so now we're up to five features already, and we're only a couple minutes into the talk. So that, that bodes well, because we're trying to get up to 21. I'm going to put that over to the side right now, so um, it's not distracting us. Now, if I want to share this with someone who's not a MATLAB user, though, it may not be so easy for them, for them to figure out what they want to put here. Um, you might need to have instructions because it looks right now or maybe like it needs to be an integer, but maybe it doesn't. And in fact, what I can do is I can replace that with um, a numeric slider. And what you see now is that I can interact with this and I can show only bigger earthquakes and even bigger yet. Um, and I can go back and slide around and I can change the properties of this slider by double clicking. I can change its label to magnitude and I can change its minimum value since it's on a log scale it wouldn't be zero um, and let's go to to nine here and I uh, you'll notice also I could have changed whoops um, changed the step size let's make it 0.2 um, on the Richter scale and so now if I, I come along and move this you'll see it moving in um, steps of 0.2 and I get my new picture well maybe this is still maybe the person who's doing this wants to see the output, but doesn't really care about the code. I can hide the code too. So I can actually have this document ready to go to share with my supervisor or someone like that. Now, another way I might choose to share it is to create a document out of this and I can. So when I come here to the save part of the tool strip, you'll see I can save it in Word, for example. And um, I probably have an old one there creating a Word document. And here you see our, um, our plots here now. OK. And since we've hidden the code, you can't see what the number is right there. All right. Um, so I just showed you two new features. I showed you interactive controls. Um, and I can do, do a little bit more on hiding the code. And the document export, so that we could create this document and share it with someone else. Well. Sharing is really nice. We get taught to do that when we're little kids. And so I might want to think about, um, is there something else that I can do? And I can actually make a much richer um, application from MATLAB. I've created one already. And this is my earthquake visualizer. OK. And what you'll see is it's going to look kind of similar to the plots that I have there. I'm just going to pick the default dates. Um, that are in there, and you'll see we get the earthquakes. But now I can change not just the magnitude, but the depth. And um, let me come here, and let's click that, and let's make it even a little bit bigger. And you can see that we're getting fewer and fewer earthquakes on there as I raise the minimum magnitude. And I can look at it as a density plot. Um, it's it, there, The information's in there. It's very faint. Um, I can look at it as a bubble plot. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. That ma maps to the geo bubble I showed you over in the live script. Um, we could look at a word cloud. Where where are these coming from? It turns out there's information in the um, meta information in the table that we've got, and you can see that some of the biggest ones were from are 
the preponderance was near Indonesia and Philippines and Japan and Fiji, so the western part of the Ring of Fire. And I can look at the data in this case in terms of a table and look around there. So this app is pretty nice, and I can give people the ability to use this app um, just by giving them the, um, uh, the, the, the app that I've created as long as they have MATLAB and all the right uh, files that I need. But I might want to um, share it. And there's a bunch of different ways I might think about sharing it, but I'm just going to pull this over and I'm going to come to the command line at the moment. And I'm going to say app designer, and I'm going to use it on the earthquake visualizer, which you just saw here. And what this is doing is it's opening the app in the, in the uh, environment in which we designed it, which is app designer. This is the preferred way of designing apps in MATLAB. And what you'll see here is I have, oops, okay, um, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You can save it if it wants, that's fine. Okay, so now um, what I can do is I can look at the layout here and you can see the layout that I had before. And I can come along here if I want to, for example, and I can put some sort of button in uh, if I would like to. And if I want to, I can change the text on that button and it's gonna be uh, push me. And when I do that, you should see that I, I get the button information down here. I can change the fonts and the location, all kinds of things. And you'll notice that there's um, something in the app that identifies this. And if I switch from designing view to a code view, I can find out in the code where I might want to add something. In fact, with the app push me, what I can do is I can come to the callback and we can say, I want it to go to the, um, uh, add a new callback here. And then I would simply put my MATLAB code in there in order to make that push button do something that we wanted. Assuming I have that the way I want, when I get ready, I can come back and I can say, I'm ready to share this. And so I can either create a MATLAB app, which will run in MATLAB. I can create a standalone desktop app uh, with the MATLAB compiler, and I can also deploy it to the web. And so what I wanna do now is move over to the web and show you the same thing that we have here. Here's the web version of the app. It's being hosted inside MathWorks. And I can come here. Um, I'm not gonna change the data right now, although I could, but you'll see that the plot updates as I move the magnitude and depth around. And again, we can look and see um, what the geo bubble looks like and so on. And so I can actually make my app available in a lot of different ways, accessible to a lot of different people, many of whom may not use MATLAB, many of whom may never use MATLAB, but the value you're adding in the app is important for them. All right. And so I'm going to add um, a check mark for app designer and one for web apps. And I'm going to close a bunch of things now. Don't save. And we'll get rid of this. And I'm going to come over here. And the next thing I want to do is um, show you. Um, what I might need to do, um, I'm guessing that a bunch of you work with data. If I were to be asking you, is your data perfect? I think you'd have to admit, even if it's uncomfortable, that it's probably not. Because it's, not, it's nothing against what you've done to collect it. It's just that there's problems with data a lot of the time. So I've got some data that I'd like to analyze and I want to first show it to you. So I'm going to come over to another live script here. We're going to look at the um, New York State energy usage data. And I'm going to look for read timetable. I'm reading in a timetable of information. And notice as I'm typing, it's offering to find, um, whoops. Uh, information for me. And so without me having to hunt around in the file system, I was able to get um, MATLAB to help me with that. And I'm going to um, actually use the variable naming rule, and I want them to preserve the names that are in that file, even if they're not typical MATLAB names. 
And now what I'm ready to do is run that um, code. So let me look in the um, workspace. Oh, I should have cleared the other things. Let me come here, whoops. I'm here, let me delete those. And now we've got energy load. And if I look at energy load in the variable editor, you'll see it's a, called a timetable. It tells me it's got 34,000 lines and 11 columns. That's because the New York energy grid is split into 11 different regions. And let's just pick one of them. I'll pick Dunwoody. Well, once I pick Dunwoody, how do I know if I imported the data correctly? Maybe I wanna see what's going on. I can come to the plots tab here and I can simply click plot when I do. And that's one way of getting some of the information out. Now, um, I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna close this right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the workspace browser and I've still got energy load selected. And now I have different choices in the uh, um, plots tab here. You'll see I have a stack plot or a parallel plot. I'm gonna go with a stack plot And what you see is a plot of the 11 different regions in New York with their um, time sequences here. And the nice thing is this plot is alive um, also by default interactive. And you can see that I can see the data tips for all of the different um, locations as I move the mouse around. So in fact, if I get to some of these places early on, trying to see if I can get to one of those zeros, but you can see it jumps around a lot here. So I can actually understand the data better by seeing, oh, in fact, it looks like there's correlations of um, jumps down and in some cases jumps up. And so it makes me understand a little bit more about the data um, when I look at it that way. Now, I'm going to uh, close that and come back to my script here and one of the things that you will notice if I come back here um, is this is the plot I had outside before is that there's a bunch of zeros in the data. Now it turns out, if you think about it, forget about it being the state of New York, pretty much anywhere in the world, there's very little likelihood that there's some time when there's zero power being used by everyone. Zero, not a little bit, but zero. And so we confirmed it with the energy grid people. And in fact, they use zero to indicate when they're missing some data. And this is a typical problem when we're working with data that there's something that where we have to account for missing data or glitches in the data of various kinds. And so I wanna show you how we, you would do that here. Um, well, we've been investing a lot into um, uh, helping you do that. So what you'll see here is this is the original noisy data and then I not only use stand, uh, standardize the missing data um, so that we know what the zeros we're doing, and then I'm gonna take that and fill the missing data. And I can find out more information about fill the missing, but I'm still not really done because look at this, I've got all these spikes too. Now, here is a crazy line of MATLAB code. I'm not even sure if it's MATLAB code, are you? It says clean data that looks like a variable. It looks like these areas where there's code versus text. And it says filled outliers in energy load dot on Woody using linear. Okay, let's see if that's what's happening. I'm gonna click that and run it. And I get a plot out here. By the way, one of the things that I can do if I want to is I can take the plot out if I wanted to, for example, zoom in and make it bigger. I'm not gonna do that right now. But again, this is interactive and um, I can use data tips and I can actually zoom in. I'll let me zoom in horizontally here and you'll see, I get the same thing with the code it's offering to put in. And we can see a bunch of things. I can see the, um, uh, the smooth data, the original data where there's outliers and how we filled them. Well, how did that happen? Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I am, it might be fair to say cautiously trusting, but maybe not even quite that solidly trusting. And so I always like to see what's behind this. And if I look in here, I can click the, um, the arrow there and I can see, by the way, these tasks come from near where the controls are on the live editor tool strip. Okay, so we come here and it's, 
asking me for the name of my output, and I have to select the data. And you'll see I took the energy load at Dunwoody, and I'm going to plot it versus date. And then I get to say what I want to do. Do I want to remove outliers or fill them? And if I'm going to clean them, how do I want to clean them? I can do it with interpolation or nearest neighbor, things like that. But how am I going to detect when there's something gone? Well, I can detect here. Let's say let's doing a let's do a um, something with uh, quartiles. And what you see is it's recomputing this, so it's very easy for me to play around and try a whole bunch of things before finally setting on, oh yeah, moving mean, I think maybe does a little bit better than the others. And once I do that, you have a choice of looking at the same code that's underneath. Now I have to admit, when I first used these live tasks, I looked all the time to see what the code was underneath because I don't like surprises. I wanna make sure that the right thing is happening with my data. But it got to the point where I really understood what was going on and I understood that there were choices with fill outliers, which I could find out more about by clicking here and getting help. Um, so that's something I could do. And um, while I'm here on help, let me just point out a couple things that are important. We have examples. If an example does exactly what you want it to do or very close, you might not need to read the whole rest of the documentation page there to get moving forward. And there's also see also, which tells you a bunch of in interesting things. When it was introduced, um, other functions in MATLAB or functionality that you might find interesting, and some topics in the documentation that you might find helpful. Okay, so what I can do then is I feel reassured um, that this is doing what I want, and now I can leave this um, the way it is. And um, so if I come over here, I think I showed you function hints uh, in the live editor. Let me bring it over. I didn't, I talked a little bit about timetables, but I didn't say much about them. I will tell you a little bit more about them in just a minute, but this, I'm reading this in as a timetable. And remember, energy load is a timetable, and I, we opened that. Let's open it again. And a timetable basically has um, an M by N array of data. Each column is its own data. Um, uh, so in this case, they all happen to be watts, but I could put in disparate things if I wanted. It's just a collection of information. You'll see the very first column that's date isn't labeled as one of the columns of data. It's intrinsic to the data set. So if I want to, I can come over here and you can see that it looks like the data is roughly every five minutes, which is what they tell us at the um, from the, the energy providers. But um, I can now deal with this whole sequence because it's a timetable with some special timetable sorts of functionality. And so what I can do is I can look to see what's going on with the time signals here. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me come here. And that now you'll see, and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. When I did this, I looked at the um, difference between the dates from the successive dates um, and I made a table out of them and I did a summary. And the summary is giving me the mean, the median, and the max. So the, me the median difference between these time points is five minutes, which is good because that is what the grid um, operators told us about, that they collect data every five minutes. But you'll notice that our minimum was three seconds and our maximum was an hour and five minutes. And maybe for going forward, we need things to be evenly sampled. So what I'm gonna come over here now is take the clean data um, and I'm going to um, retime the data. So again, you can look in the documentation to find out how to do this and all the options, but I can retime the data so that I now have with a summary, minimum, maximum, and median time differences as exactly five minutes. Okay. And when I did that, I showed you a stacked plot here. I showed you the plots tab, which is really nice because again, sometimes you don't know what kind of plot you're looking for and you might, or what the name of it is. So you can come here and you can find that out. Um, and then you can also find out more information as you can see here by getting more help. Okay. Um, and I showed you the missing data functions. We did live editor tasks. I didn't show you here, but I showed you before that we could do this um, with the live editor um, 
uh, output in line or side by side. So I'm going to give myself credit for that. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to do while I'm here, and I'm going to come up to this clean data section. You know, having all this code all in there all at once is a little bit messy. Um, and so what I might do is I'm just going to convert this to editable code. Um, where did it go? And I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually delete this. I don't want that. And I'm going to um, come here. Uh, come on, let me keep going. Up to fill missing. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert this to a local function. And when I do, um, so clean, clean and fill. When I do, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Clean it. So what you'll see here is that I now have a local function. It's in my script, um, so I can have functions in scripts as long as they're at the end. And if we come up here, what you'll see is we replace this with clean and fill the data with the energy load. And um, I can say fill missing and, um, and um, clean the data. So I get to have the, um, the important code there, but not cluttering my view of what's really going on. We're gonna look at the data, we're gonna filter it, we're gonna make sure we get the data points we want, we're gonna fill in the missing data, we're gonna clean it up, get rid of the outliers and so on. And the code is below, but we don't have to be like right in the middle of it as we're looking at it. So I'm gonna show you that I did uh, refactoring as well. Okay, whoops, that's not what I want. Come over here. Just get that out of our way. Oh, I have one more thing. We did functions and scripts. Now, we have, I mentioned so briefly that you didn't really get to see all of it. Let me clear things again. And um, that we have apps. I brought up the earthquake visualizer before. Um, but suppose I have some data um, that I would like to um, understand, and it happens to be a signal. Now I'm gonna come over here because I wanna load in some data. I'm gonna load in some clean data here. And when I come over to the apps, there is an app, a signal analyzer app that will help me do what I want. And I'm gonna let it come up for a moment here. Um, well, it's taking its time. I wanna show you, we have a lot of apps. You can see I have a bunch of favorites and apps that I've either made or borrowed from other people and installed. Um, but you'll also see the MathWorks product apps from all of our products. So we have um, apps to help you with machine learning, math stats and optimization, control systems, signal processing, communications, image processing, test and measurement, and so on. So for a lot of different areas, there may be an app to help you with some of this. And one of the reasons that we would like to do that, where is my app here? Um, I don't know. And that lab is misbehaving again. Let me just close some things. Hmm. This shouldn't be happening. I am going to start up MATLAB again. I apologize, I don't know what's happened. Um, but once MATLAB comes up again, we should be able to get going. Okay, so 
I'm going to um, come back over here. Take a moment. Come back over here. Um, I'm doing things not in the order I wanted to show you, but I'm going to. Um, that's not the right thing. I'm going to start my project again, which I will tell you about in a little bit. And this is that features. that you saw before. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to come to my um, project and we're going to sh um, show the Signal app, which should have loaded some data. On. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to um, uh, open the file here and I'm going to run it. Okay. And now I should have the data in here. That's good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the um, apps tab and we're going to try to load in the signal analyzer app. Okay, that's better. Okay, and while I'm doing that, um, what you'll see here is this app um, uh, is going to work on signals. So I'm going to take my energy load here and I'm going to load it into the signals that we might want to filter. And I can look inside here and you can see I can get my done Woody. And so what let me undo that. Let's make this one the live one. Let's load, load the data there. And now what I'd like to do is I would like to look at the spectrum for it. I would like to do some analysis to try to understand what are the dominant frequencies. And so I can come over here and I can use the same information. And I don't want the time, but I want the spectrum. Let's get rid of the time. And now I have a spectrum here. OK. And so one of the things that I might want to do is I might want to um, zoom in. I want to see what are the, the biggest ones seem to be towards the beginning. So let me come over here and let's zoom in and we'll find um, that there are a bunch of peaks here. And what I might do, and this might be what happens, for example, for um, people looking at vibrations and stuff like that might care about something like this, where you want to be able to measure um, the difference between two things. So I can come here and line up my one cursor with the first peak. And I can take the second one and line it with the second peak. Now, if I want to do this um, again and again and again, rather than um, going in and doing everything by hand, guess what? This is another opportunity in MATLAB where I get to create um, some code from it. So I can generate a script. I'm going to generate a spectrum script. And you can see here, it tells me what limits we chose. Um, and it loads in the data, it tells which part of the data we're looking at and what function we call. So it's another way to learn some of the functionality in MATLAB without um, necessarily being an expert at it right from the beginning. So I'm gonna come back, I need to repopulate this. So forgive me while I give myself credit for all those other ones we did a moment ago. We are stack plot, yes. We're Whoops, talked about live tasks, refactoring, functions and scripts, signal analyzer, and apps. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my um, webcam off um, from the
No, don't do that to me. Um, okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn my webcam off because I wanna use it in MATLAB. So um, do you ever remember going to like um, a fair when you were a kid? Or maybe you still do it sometimes and they have those booths, those photo booths and you make a lot of silly photos with your friends or your family in it. Well, I can do something like white space around it. So let me do T dot um, tile spacing. Let's get rid of some of it so that there's less spacing. And T dot padding also equals none. And then I'm going to put a label on and I'm going to say my Y label is honey faces. 
Now, if you've been using subplot, you know how hard it has been to get something that was going to um, span. Oh, I did the wrong thing. I needed to do um, T funny faces. Um, so when I give it the tile layout, you'll notice that it labels the whole collection rather than just one plot, which I did by the mistakenly by doing just the regular Y label. Okay, so I've got titles and labels across multiple areas. Okay, um, I'm gonna come back to MATLAB now. Now, for those of you who have ever needed to work with a hardware, you may wonder how hard or difficult it is to do that in MATLAB. And I can't show you in detail how to actually hook up hardware right now in our session, but I can show you we provide a bunch of ways of getting information. So what I can do is I can come to the add-ons and look for um, hardware support packages. And when I do, this is going to take me to the MathWorks um, file exchange. And for example, I can just look for ones that will support Arduino. I have to type it correctly. And you'll notice instead of 314 or whatever, we have a modest number 32. And if I want to see which ones are just from MathWorks, I can click here. And you'll see we have support packages that work with both MATLAB and with Simulink uh, for the Arduino boards. Now, I may, wanna, um, I may want to um, do something else, though. I might want to look for something that's not a support package. Fortunately, I can do that in MATLAB as well. So for example, if I come here to MATLAB, to the, the, the main area, I can say, you know what? I'm really interested in learning about eye tracking. I wonder if anyone's put together some software. And so you'll see there's a bunch of things, but what I'm thinking of isn't so much for automated driving. Let's see what's in science, engineering, and industry. And we'll notice that if I go into the sciences, there are a bunch of choices, whether it's in neuroscience or psychology, and I have a bunch of eye tracking um, potential software that I could use. So it's a really nice way to augment what I uh, already have by looking on the, um, uh, the file exchange, basically built in way through MATLAB to get this. Now, the nice thing is I can also manage my add-ons from here. And of course, if you have something, we'd love for you to make a contribution as well. So if I come over here, I can say, I just showed you about hardware support and add on explore. Now, for those of you who have used MATLAB um, for a long time, um, you may have code from a long time ago that maybe um, has, um, maybe isn't going to run the way you would like it to. So let me come here and show you what I would do. And let me clear this out. Okay, so now I have a script from a long time ago, except for I updated it to be a live script. And you'll see it's got errors and it's got warnings in it. These are from the code analyzer, these warnings um, telling me things like tree fit has been removed, use fit C tree or whatever. So it's giving me information. In fact, if I go to run this, let me do run here, I put a uh, run button from the live editor on my quick access toolbar, and I get an error saying tree fit unrecognized function or variable tree fit. Well, okay, I could do this file by file and try to run everything and get the collection of all of this, but actually we've made it fairly easy to do this. So I can do code. I can use the code compatibility report on my live script. and it's busy thinking, it's going to go through the document and you'll see that it's analyzing many, many things. It's looking for all kinds of different behavior and it's giving you an overview of what it found. And basically what it found was uh, four things that were removed and it says two new pieces of functionality that may improve the code. So it's telling you about some of the other things. And what's nice about this is it's very easy to see what I've got just by in the summary. Or if I say, oh, this is some of the code that wasn't been working, hasn't been working. It tells me where, what line. So I can go to that line in my code right there. And I can come back to the report and I can look in the documentation and I can find out what information there is so that I can figure out if I, how, how and if I want to make the change. So there's information from the release notes in that case. Okay. 
So um, suppose I did all this. I'm not going to do that in front of you in the interest of time. Um, but what I'm going to do is come to my current folder. And let me make this a little bit easier. I've got two different um, documents here. And I'm going to right click and compare selected files and folders. And what you see is my updated one on the left, my regular one on the right. And you can see side by side comparison of the changes we made. You'll see that TreeFit is, um, uh, this is the original one. The original one, this is the uh, updated one, the, um, updated. And so you see TreeFit was in this first one, and you see the Fit C tree in the second one. And you'll notice some other changes that we made based on the different um, recommendations. And if you want to use this compatibility report and tool, it can work on folders, not just files. And so can this comparison tool. So that can be very, very helpful for you too. So let's come over here. I showed you the code compatibility report the comparison tool, and the code analyzer. One of the things that you um, noticed because I had to point it out to start up MATLAB again is that I've been using projects this time. So what, what is a project and what is it good for? Well, let me show you a little bit about it. Um, often, um, I'm not working on a small body of code and often I'm actually also working with a whole bunch of my colleagues. And this may be true for you too. So there's a whole bunch of things that I find important to do. And one is to organize the code in some reasonable way. Maybe I want my data in a different folder than the demos and so on. And we agree on that. I also, you'll notice, have my code in Git in this case, which if I put it in a project, it understands using Git if I need to. I want to. And a project will help me manage many different things. But in particular, um, often in the project, you want to make sure certain things are on your path or maybe removed from your path. But more commonly, you want to add all the relevant things to your path. And you might want it to do something specific at startup and shutdown. So I can say things like, I want it to run these two files at startup. And I could do something for shutdown as well. And I can figure out what I want the project path to be. And I just had it add where I was with all the subfolders so that I could have it. And I can work with this and update it and still commit, make my commits to Git uh, as I use it. So that's been very helpful. And the other thing you'll notice is I can make project shortcuts. And I even showed you one of them. It basically was very simple, but I can open the code. We can open the file and we could see that all that was doing was loading in some data for me so that I could um, do the demo without having to remember where the data was, what the data file name was. So. Um, projects are a great way to organize a bunch of information that belongs together, but it's all these different pieces, and it helps you make sure it's a cohesive set. Um, so I'm going to give myself a, um, a uh, we're up to 30 features, everyone. That's a fairly good. Um, and now I want to come to um, documentation because I've showed you right now 30 different features. Hopefully some of them are ones that are interesting to you and maybe you haven't seen them before. Where would you find out more? Well, if you come to the um, documentation, I can come to MATLAB and I can look at the release notes and I can further filter the information here. So for example, maybe you last updated your MATLAB in 19A. So you can say, I would just want to look between 19A and now what's new and maybe you know, you care about something I care about, let's say uh, math and data analysis, I can pick two selections there. And um, you'll see it takes um, the release notes, which are fairly large to a much smaller, more manageable set to look at. And furthermore, if I really want to, I can come here and look for incompatibilities. But what you'd see in particular are the major new things that are happening um, here. And if some of them, if you don't care about normalization, you might not matter, but you might care very much about implicit expansion and you can read more and it will tell you what, um, what it's all about. So I'm hoping that in the course of this, I have been able to show you a bunch of new features um, in MATLAB that you feel like will be useful that you want to use and furthermore, how to find more. And I would like to encourage you to um, uh, put your final questions in the chat right now um, so that we can start um, uh, answering some of them. Um, whoops, sorry. So we, we can start answering them. Ah. Uh, answering them. 
But while you're doing that, I want to uh, tell you two things. There's some links below the, um, the viewer that you're looking at on the YouTube page. Um, one is for the MATLAB Expo 2020 on demand, and it's an online site featuring technical talks covering a broad, broad range of topics. I think there's 24 of them, and it's where MathWorks tools play a critical central role in um, uh, people's work. That's number one. Number two, if you're interested in more learning more about Simulink, you might be interested in joining the Simulink uh, student challenge where uh, you put in uh, an idea of something that you want to build. You show how it might work and you might be the winner of a thousand dollars prize. Finally, I don't want to forget you to subscribe. Uh, don't want you to forget to subscribe to the MathWorks channel. It's the button right there on your screen and you'll get the reminders for the next event. Um, and now I'm going to go see if there's some questions to answer. Someone has asked, I wouldn't normally open the file and run it. Um, so with the shortcuts, um, it's a good question. I can open the file and run it, um, but I chose not to because for me, the goal here wasn't opening the file and running it. It was getting the data in so that I could actually show the signal app, which was the real goal for what I was doing. Um, so um, hopefully that will, um, hopefully that makes sense. You can bring it up. There's no reason you could have some of these other ones. If I look at the earthquakes one, if we open the file, it just says open my file. So in that case, I opened it and then I was running it. So it's an absolutely reasonable way that you could um, uh, operate if that's the way you wish. And I guess we lost a little bit of audio, uh, time on audio uh, when I turned my camera on and off. Um, so I apologize for that. I hope it's back and um, uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much.